Can I get a 170 on 170 in GRE quant? What topics should I actually study for? No matter how much I practice, I'm not able to score above 160 plus. Are these some of the questions running through your mind? Expert answers coming your way in 3, 2, 1. Hi, my name is Vishnu and I'm a GRE and admission expert here at GRE Edge. Today, we're going to decode the most common mistakes that stop students from scoring a perfect 170 in the most legit way with data. At GRE Edge, we'd like a lot of data about a student and how they actually prepare. In fact, every millisecond is tracked to ensure each student receives the most personalized GRE training ever. Now, we're going to share the actual data of students who scored a perfect 170 and tell you the most common mistakes you need to avoid as well. Before we dive into the common mistakes, most of the 170 aspirants just like you have this one assumption. Students who scored a perfect 170 tend to practice, practice, practice and only practice. Absolutely false. In fact, let's take a closer look at how 170 scorers at GRH prepare for their quad. As you can see, students tend to spend a whopping 60% of their time only in learning concepts, formula and techniques. Just like how a building is only as strong as its foundation, your quant score is also heavily dependent on your fundamentals. Now that we have that out of the way, let's look at what the GRE quant syllabus is exactly. As you know, the GRE quantitative section tests your high school mathematics. Now, ETS defines four major sections in your GRE quant. For better understanding and simplicity, we have classified it as six topics, starting from Arithmetic, Algebra, Geometry, Data Interpretation, Data Analysis and Applied Mathematics. And the different types of quant questions that you can expect are Quantitative Comparison, Numerical Entry, Multiple Choice Single Selection, Multiple Choice Multiple Selection. And you can expect all the type of question from any of these six topics. If you're curious about the different type of questions and what they look like, check out the free link in the description on different type of quant questions with solved examples and tips. All right, now let's get down to business. Number one, not being able to prioritize. We already know a 170 scorer spends 60% of his time learning. Now, what do they actually learn? Take a look at the average time spent per topic. You will find that students spend most of their time in these three important sections, geometry, applied mathematics, and data analysis compare this time graph to the question-wise distribution of each topic. In a section consisting 20 questions, you can expect 6 to 8 questions from arithmetic and algebra, 6 to 8 questions from geometry, 3 to 5 questions from data interpretation, 2 to 4 from data analysis and applied mathematics. Although algebra and arithmetic are higher in volume, the difficulty level of questions is higher in the last 3 topics. That's why students who score a perfect 170 or 170 in quad prefer to master these topics. If you're just starting your preparation and you find yourself falling short of a 170 by 15 points or more, then strengthen your basics first. Work on topics that produced a higher volume of questions in the GRE like algebra, arithmetic and geometry before moving on to data interpretation and applied mathematics. Number two, falling prey to trick questions. Rather than telling you what this is, let me show you what I mean. Given that x is not equal to zero, quantity a, mod of x plus mod of minus two. Quantity b, mod of x minus two. The choices are quantity a is greater, quantity b is greater, the two quantities are equal, the relationship cannot be determined from the information given. While the question looks fairly simple, if you're not thorough with the rules of a mod operator, you might be in big trouble. Since the question states that x cannot be zero, we know that x has to be a positive or a negative number. We also know mod of minus 2 is equal to 2. So we are basically comparing mod of x plus 2 with mod of x minus 2. If we substitute mod of x with 1, then the left hand side equals 1 plus 2 equal to 3 and the right hand side 1 minus 2 equal to 1. 
But before you run off and mark the answer as option A, let's try it for one more value and this time a negative 1. If you substitute mod of x with minus 1, then left hand side becomes mod of minus 1 plus mod of minus 2 and right hand side equal to mod of minus 1 minus 2 which is equal to 3. So clearly the answer cannot be determined just on the basis of given data and the right answer is actually option D. Questions like this are designed to make you stop, take a deep breath, think and then answer it. So how do you avoid this mistake? When you create your study plan, make sure you allocate time for advanced practice questions. Solve GRE style questions that are slightly difficult like level 4 and level 5, especially from geometry, sequences, permutation and combination and probability. To help you understand this better, we have shared a 170 scorers 30 d study plan in the description right below. Ensure you check it out. This brings us to the end of the first part of the video, but there are a few more key mistakes that you should avoid, which I'll be sharing in the next video. Click on the bell button to stay tuned for further notifications and updates from GREH. If you like this video, click the subscribe button for more such videos on GRE and admissions regularly. If you have any specific difficulties with respect to your GRE, feel free to share in the comments box. We will definitely get back to you with more and more informative content and exciting videos ahead. Until I see you the next time, this is Vishnu from GRE Edge. Happy learning.